Uh, Steve, let's talk more about uh, the Fed, the ECB, and global interest rates. Joining us is Jean-Claude Trichet, former president uh, of the ECB, and here on set, I like that backdrop, we'll be there in a couple of weeks, uh, and here with us uh, on set is Jim Grant, founder and editor uh, of Grant's Interest Rate Observer. Jim, we just off camera, I, I heard you saying that you were expecting a cut. I can't imagine that you would have been thrilled about a cut if it had happened. You're just probably um, just, just talking about what might happen, not what should happen. Almost did. So I was telling what, you. What? What? So look, playing devil's advocate, who in the right mind would cut with unemployment where it is right now? Well, the storyline would have been, and indeed virtually was, that inflation is problematically low, and that the yield right. curve is inverted, and that uh, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. As the chairman himself said uh, during the press conference, that would have been the storyline, and I think that was, in fact, uh, how the market read the action because it might, the Fed might as well have cut given what has happened in the markets since. I like when stocks go up, you know what I mean? I, I like when well, that's, mortgage that's, rates go down. Why shouldn't I buy into that? That's a, great, that's a great narrative. Inflation's low, let's do it. Let's keep the pedal to the metal. Well, uh, very, very low interest rates uh, lead to very, very big distortions. And you Where can, are we seeing? Are you sure we're seeing oh, that? Yeah, Is it just the yeah. bond market in general? Well, you, you, can, you can see, for example, there's $12.5 trillion worth of securities, fixed income securities, priced to yield less than nothing right. on a nominal basis. I'm going to blame our next guest for that. Uh, well, actually, it is a, it's a singular thing in uh, finance. That, yeah. uh, um, the federal debt itself is an example of the consequences of these very low rates. Right. It's painless to build it up, and uh, it will be painful to pay it off. Uh, so, President Trichet, I was, I was, uh, it's a little tongue in cheek. I'm joking, but you, you were down here because, you know, it's a global marketplace now, and, it, you know, you've got the boon, which is negative, and just, you know, low rates everywhere. Mark Mario Draghi going back to the well with more, more stimulus. I could blame Europe's, uh, you know, entitlement state economies for, for needing all this stimulus because you can't grow over there anymore. Is there anything to that? This is all your fault? No, <laughs> certainly not. Uh, but uh, what, what I would say is that uh, Mario Draghi had to counter uh, an analysis which uh, was uh, very, very frequent, uh, saying that if we have a global shock, or if we have a recession, the ECB will be uh, totally incapable to do anything. And uh, of course, because we have already low interest rates, because we have already a large uh, volume of uh, tradable securities in the portfolio and so forth. And I think that the message coming from Europe was, even if with the present level of uh, our uh, policy tools, we have to cope with very grave events, we will do it. That, that was the reassuring element in what has been said. He was not pre-announcing a decrease of rates. Uh, so it's a little bit different as uh, in the U.S., where uh, clearly the uh, possibility of augmenting the, the likelihood of, an in, of a decrease of rates is uh, signaled by the Fed with several reasons. I, I, don't, uh, I, I see, of course, the inflation, the prices, uh, level is a, is a reason, but uh, Chairman Powell also mentioned the uh, confidence level, which has been hampered quite considerably, the trade issue and the trade quarrels that are also very, very important. And to conclude on that, I would say for the European, the trade issue is even more important than for the U.S., because we are more open than the U.S., the uh, uh, vulnerability of the euro area economy to uh, uh, protectionism is, I would say, twice as big as in the U.S. in terms of volume of trade compared to GDP. And also, when you see the global value chain, which is incorporated in our own uh, exports and imports. So uh, we are very vulnerable. And that is a point I wanted to mention, because uh, the trade quarrel are started and entertained uh, by the United States. And it's a big problem for the global economy, but particularly for Europe. You know, the, the funny thing about uh, this uh, tension between uh, Chairman Powell and President Trump is that, uh, well, Mr. Trump probably cannot fire Powell. Powell could certainly fire Trump. The well, power by, by simply raising rates. <laughs> by saying, by saying we are um, going to raise rates, um, <laughs> and uh, that would be that. 
game on. Um, but you know, the, the striking thing about all of this discussion is that inflation has taken a seat behind the back seat. Uh, the new thing in central banking, and perhaps President Trichet could comment, is, uh, is credibility has to do with the world's belief that you can levitate the rate of inflation to a certain level. And somebody asked Powell yesterday, uh, what about uh, uh, this talk about a 4% inflation rate? And Mr. Powell said, well, I'm not sure the world thinks we have the stuff to do it, so it's worrisome. What is this? Right. Do they really want that? Well, yeah. I had a different thought, uh, Jean-Claude, when, when you said, you know, Mario Draghi is letting people know we've got the tools to handle uh, another downturn, even at these low rates. Really? I mean, why should I believe that? I mean, so you even go more negative? I mean, we can go to minus 10 on, on, on interest. I'm, I'm not convinced that you're not pushing on a string already. That's what scares me, is that you can say you're going to do it, but you don't really have, you can't back it up with, with actually being successful doing it. Is that wrong? No, I, I fully agree that uh, accommodation the world over uh, in the advanced economy is extremely high. And it is true in Japan, of course. Uh, it's a caricature in Japan. It's very true in Europe, of course, and also true in the U.S. Because after all, uh, U.S. has full employment. U.S. has a very, very buoying economy, obviously, and uh, in terms of you know, the, the cycle. And uh, so uh, I would say we are all in the same basket. The problem we have, which is a little bit unusual for a central bank to make, is that the bargaining power of labor the demand for uh, increases in wages and salaries in all advanced economy has considerably weakened. And that creates, of course, unit labor costs that are not dynamic in line with the uh, definition of price stability, which is 2%. So we, we are desperately looking for a little bit more dynamic unit labor cost evolution to reach the 2%. And it is particularly true, I have to say, in Japan, also very true in Europe and in the most, uh, I would say, competitive economy in Europe, which is uh, Germany, for instance. We still have a level of national inflation in Germany, last reading 1.4 percent, which is much too low. And to the extent it is the ceiling for all the other national inflation in Europe, otherwise they would lose competitiveness vis-a-vis -vis Germany, we have there a big problem. So. The main problem we have in the advanced economy is very much out of the realm of the central banks, in my opinion. It is very much a change of society, which implies necessarily the social partners, entrepreneurs and uh, workers, and also uh, the political, uh, uh, I would say, uh, sphere, because, because it's part of the overall fabric of society. Yeah. You know, the, the, I think the problem we have in the world, uh, Mr. Trichet, is the central banks. And I think that uh, post-crisis central banking is the engine of instability, distortion, and ultimately of a kind of disaster. And I say this because uh, the world's central banks, what? I think particularly, the, particularly sir, the ECB, have destroyed the censors of the bond market. There is the nonsense, I mean, the Bulgarian three-year note trading below zero, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There is no uh, pricing for risk of credit loss. There is no anticipation. So the bond markets have been virtually wiped out through the central bank action. The National Weather Service in this country spends a billion dollars a year. It has 76 billion observations of weather a year. It has 10,000 times the computing power of the thing on your desk, and it has the confidence to predict the future out to 10 days. We listen to these central banks. We nod, we nod sagely with them. They say, yes, the five-year, five-year forward inflation rate, says Mr. Draghi, will be too low. They can't possibly know that. And in not knowing, but yet persisting in these policies, they distort and ultimately they will destroy. Hmm. Okay, uh, great. I was going to... Well, I, I will not... Go ahead. jean claude go ahead. Just very quickly. Can, can, I, can I say... Yeah. Only to say that uh, it is not because it was an arbitrary set of decisions that such decisions were taken in Japan, in the U.S., and in Europe. And you, you might remember that at the time the Europeans were accused to be too timid, too shy, not going uh, sufficiently uh, dynamically in the direction which was suggested by the United States. So I think we all have a big problem in our economies. I take it that you are not recommending that we embark on deflation 
because we have also experienced deflation in the past. So I agree with you that uh, uh, what has been done has a lot of counterproductive consequences, but it's absolutely obvious. And uh, I would say Ben Bernanke was particularly eloquent in saying, well, we avoided a big depression and nobody would uh, be better off if we had a big depression. Absolutely nobody. Not the people, of course, neither the market. So all taken into account, I think that the central bank did their job. But of course, they are not the only game in town. And it is up now to other partners to realize that uh, the heart of our problem is, in my opinion, the weakening of the bargaining power of labor. It's very unusual for a central banker, a former central banker to say that, but I really trust it.